hopefully everyone can see my screen. We're going to show off the Cycle Online Marketing Suite today um, and we're going to go through a technical deep dive. Um, my name is Timothy Ward, I'm the Lead Solution Architect for Australia and New Zealand and if you have any questions during the presentation or after, feel free to email me at tiw at sitecore.net. So let's have a look at what we're going to look at today. First of all, we're going to go through a technical introduction. We're then going to go look at the API. We're going to have a look at the architecture of the online marketing suite from a DB and an API perspective as well. We're then going to look through the technical concepts of the online marketing suite. and We're going to use these concepts to extend the system. We're then going to look at the powerful reporting facilities we have available, followed by a few FAQs. And then finally, the next step is where we go from here. Just a few notes before we start. We will have time for questions at the end of the presentation. The webinar will be recorded and the slides will be available for all to use. Uh, the final slide will show you where to get the webinar and the slides from. Feel free to email me any questions about the presentation, tiw at sitecore.net. There are some code examples that are used throughout the demo will, which will not be made for, um, available for public use. And like the name suggests, just a small caveat, this is a very technical deep dive. So some of the basic understandings of the online marketing suite is really necessary to get full understanding of all the concepts that are being presented today. So let's first dive into the system requirements. So the OMS database can get quite large. And because of this, we recommend that a dedicated physical server is put in place with at least a minimum of one quad core CPU a minimum of 8 gig of RAM and you might want to separate out your hard drives for one for the operating system, two disks, disks for the actual database and one for a temporary database storage. We do recommend Windows Server 2003 or 2008 for the installation and of course using the 64-bit is recommended. Similar for the SQL Server environment, we do recommend 2008 and a 64-bit installation as well. We also emphasize the importance of a relevant maintenance plan in order to keep indexes tuned so your database is always running as quick as possible. We will actually show you during this presentation how you can set up and build a maintenance plan. Just a couple of the environmental settings. You might want to consider putting the analytics database in a clustered server. So, for example, as a best practice, we recommend that you place the OMS database on a separate SQL server or cluster than the existing core, master, and web databases that Sitecore needs. You might want to also consider larger hardware facilities, such as solid state disks, extra CPUs, and memory. We have done some extensive testing within Australia and shown that 400 users browsing your website will average about four megabits of analytics data per minute. This is obviously depending upon what your users are doing, but this is just an average aggregate. You might want to also consider separating the SQL Server data collection from the SQL analysis server as well. Consider limiting storage of uninteresting behavior such as robot information. You can change this enable or disabled in the analytics configuration file. Consider dividing the collection of analytics data for clusters of web farms. So for example, you might want to have five web farm servers all sharing the one OMS write repository. We're going to go through a couple of different setups you can put for your environment. So first of all, we have a very simple setup, a failover setup with one analytics database. So if we look at this diagram, we have our users coming in from the internet. We go through a firewall which talks to a network load balancer. From here, we have multiple different web servers that talk to a content management system and a separate analytics database. We can, of course, extend this out to a much more complex infrastructure. So the infrastructure that we suggested before with the clustered servers can be shown here. We have a firewall that talks between two network load balancers, which then talks to two web farms. These web farms talk to analytics databases. One of the important things to mention is that only one of the analytics databases has to be set up as the indexer. So you can have multiple different analytics systems setting up on one server that don't index your databases. This will be shown in the cycleweb.config file. How do we create a maintenance plan? 
Well, first of all, open your, your SQL Management um, Service Studio and you want to go to the Management and right click on Maintenance Plans. First of all, you'll be given a wizard. You want me to step through all the steps, filling it in with the following data. First of all, you have to specify a name to rebuild your indexes. Make sure that you select single schedule for the entire plan or no schedule and click next. The next screen you will see is the tasks that you want to run. The ones that you'll want to check are check database integrity, rebuild indexes and update the statistics. Please click next. Next you want to actually select the database that stores all your analytics information and click OK. The next step is to specify the rebuild index task. So first of all we'll specify our database in the first field. Make sure that you have keep index online while re-indexing turned off. Then you want to update statistics task. You want to select the actual database Make sure that you specify all existing statistics under the update heading and also a full scan as the scan type and click next. For the reporting option in the wizard, you'll want to make sure that write a report to a text file is not selected. And once you run the wizard, you'll get the following summary. One of the small caveats is that you might want to make sure that you have the correct permissions to be able to create a maintenance plan and sometimes you will need to run this particular maintenance plan under the SA permissions. If so, simply click OK after you've set up the permissions and you will get the following maintenance plan running. So what are some environmental considerations? Well of course if you've got a very busy website receiving a lot of traffic, you'll have high CPU load on a SQL server. So, on a busy SQL server with an OMS database that is greater than 10 gigabytes, the CPU can overload if the indexes in the OMS databases are very fragmented. This is why we create a maintenance plan that we showed before. You might want to also consider discarding the robot information that Sitecore Analytics will, will render. So, to do this, you can deactivate or activate the exclude robots within your sitecore.analytics file. You might want to also consider removing robot data manually. This can be done with an online, um, with a SQL statement that is available online at the Sitecore Developer Network. You might want to also include, in, um, consider increasing the fill factor. For those who don't know what SQL fill factor it is, it's simply a reserved percentage of free space that consists for, for that, um, is for indexing. So you might want to increase it to 50% on the following tables, page, page event, session and global session. You might want to also consider if the separation of your online marketing suite database and your other site course databases such as the web, the master and the core need to be separated. As said before, we strongly recommend to remove da robot data frequently. Let's have a look at the architecture of the online marketing suite. So let's just say we get a HTTP request from our user to our website. First of all, it hits the unified authentication services. This is where we get information, for example, that identifies our visitor as either an anonymous user or an implicit user by our backend information such as CRM. So, when Sitecore Online Marketing Seat receives a request, it can see that once this person has been not made anonymous and their, their username is implicit, we can see that they are, they are a particular person. The next step in the pipeline is to request the actual context. So it's from this that we can gain things like, okay, what is the site that this person is requesting? How the language? What is the URL? And what is the content item that we are currently working with? It could also resolve devices. So what information do I have now? I have the information based off the HTTP context that I'm dealing with the Netherlands sub, sub site, I'm dealing with a particular content item, the products page, I'm rendering my site in a particular language and I'm rendering it using the iPhone device. Let's go on to the next step which is the lo 